All right, so welcome everyone to the 14th uh, ROS2 Hardware Acceleration Working Group meeting. Uh, let's start the meeting by minutes. So hopefully now everyone can see my screen. Can someone confirm, please? Yes, we can. All right, fantastic. Thank you. So hoping everyone had a fantastic start of the 2023 uh, year. The uh, the working group ended up uh, last year, uh, mid-December, with uh, last meeting that was successful. We'll be discussing uh, today some of the results obtained last year. We'll also be touching on some updates regarding some of the strategic projects that are being driven uh, by the working group. Um, that will include a small update uh, that includes the robotics MCU or the Robo5 project that is a uh, collaboration between acceleration robotics and plan b so we have max today with us who will be reporting a bit on, on what's the progress there uh, and finally we'll touch slightly on what are new goals for the working group uh, for this upcoming 2023 uh, these goals are not set in stone uh, i asked for feedback in the community so far hasn't haven't gotten lots of it so uh, do feel free to send that feedback either in here or offline. Uh, again, the the notes minutes are for everyone to come in, but also my email and, and our contact is always open. So with that, let's get started with a couple pieces of news, which I think are worth uh, mentioning. The first one um, is the uh, first, uh, as far as I know, meetup of ROS developers in India. This was successfully organized by part of our team at Acceleration Robotics uh, in Pune. And it was driven by Pratik Nagaras and Garab. Uh, they did a fantastic job and they packed uh, dozens of uh, ROS developers uh, in India. And uh, as far as I'm hearing, it was uh, not only exciting, but led to quite a bit of networking and, and business opportunities. So uh, encouraging and giving kudos to Garab and Pratik, and also uh, mentioning that I do believe this is going to continue and keep up. So if you're interested in the ROS community in India, uh, you may want to show interest uh, and being maybe Pratik and Garab, who are part of the working group as well. Uh, now, that's the first piece of news. As a second piece of news, uh, I've been told uh, to share, and I'm really excited to do so, that there's an upcoming robotics competition uh, with the subject of uh, robotics and embedded artificial intelligence uh, around adaptive computing, so FPGA system on chips. Uh, that's going to be running in Hackster. Uh, details, uh, links, and announcements uh, will come up very soon. Uh, I've been told this, this will get posted also in Rouse's course. So stay tuned. And I uh, very, very much uh, recommend to uh, pay attention to this competition. There's going to be free boards. There's going to be a nice competitive landscape to show your capabilities for building robot applications. And of course, Ross will be at the center of everything. So uh, stay tuned for more. Uh, super excited to be uh, reporting on this. Now, with all of this, and people are still uh, joining the meeting, we're past the 45-person uh, mark already. Uh, let's uh, let's discuss slightly the first topic, because we only have 30 minutes this time. Um, and the first topic is uh, the report that we cooked based on the activities uh, last year. This uh, report uh, was disclosed both in ROS Discourse as well as in a ticket within the um, ROS Acceleration uh, GitHub organization. In a nutshell, um, 2022 was a fantastic year for the working group. We launched three new strategic projects, including uh, RobotPerf, uh, the performance benchmarking suite uh, in robotics, which we'll touch on later. We also announced uh, this cooperation between Plan B and Acceleration Robotics for building uh, the first ever robotics MCU, which is hoping to bring uh, beyond the reuse of silicon from other industries, uh, the first instances of actual microcontrollers that are robotics specific with, with actual uh, specific code natively running it there. Uh, and uh, you can see the details and we'll touch on this later on. And finally, the robotics processing unit, a uh, robot specific processing unit that helps out run ROS to computation on graphs faster. Uh, also, Pretty exciting. Now, beyond these uh, projects that we kicked off, uh, there is a bunch of uh, objectives that were also achieved. And you can see a summary uh, right in here. Uh, the year is listed first. You can see that we pretty much achieved everything except a couple of goals that we uh, we set on ourselves uh, last year. And we were pretty ambitious last year, I must admit. 
Um, but still, the goals that weren't achieved were for good reasons, I would say. The first one, we didn't manage to merge hardware acceleration kernels into upstream packages. In particular, we pushed for um, the perception stack in ROS and with image pipeline. And the reason why we weren't able to get it merged wasn't because of technical uh, reasons, was just purely because we weren't um, successful enough to convince the maintainers of that package. Um, so um, maybe they are just busy and they didn't have enough time to dedicate uh, their, uh, initiative. So um, this failed in 2022, we'll retry in the future. So uh, do stay tuned for this. Again, the work is done. Uh, we just need to find consensus, consensus on how to integrate these in upstream packages. Still, this lives in a fork right now which remains API compatible and simplifies uh, integrating hardware acceleration in your computational graphs from a perception perspective. That didn't uh, meet our expectations, but similarly, uh, we failed to organize uh, workshops and robotics on ROS2 hardware acceleration. And I must admit, I'm totally uh, guilty on this. I decided uh, pretty much last minute to not call for a workshop during ROSCon because um, there were lots of um, variables uh, in Japan this year, lots of organizational things to take into account with COVID-related matters and, and related. So uh, we decided to postpone this and neither in Roscon nor in IROS uh, do it. Uh, we might do it in upcoming years, uh, so definitely something also that we might rescue down the road. The rest of it was pretty much accomplished or is still a work in progress. Uh, and we'll discuss the goals uh, for next uh, or for this year soon after uh, after uh, this. Uh, now, really, really quickly, just to set the um, context of how far this group is uh, growing. The ROS2 Hardware Acceleration Working Group right now is, uh, I think, arguably the biggest working group in the robotics uh, ROS2 community uh, purely based on attendance uh, matters. We are already 50 persons today, and we have meetings wherein we uh, got really close to 100 uh, persons. We have lots of persons um, viewing our recordings uh, offline, and we have hundreds of subscribed participants on every meeting in the announced calls. So definitely, definitely lots of interest in hardware acceleration and GPUs and FPGAs super exciting. Uh, to put some numbers to this excitement, uh, we have grown uh, from 2021 uh, more than 3.7 times, uh, at least outreach-wise. So the amount of roboticists that we have impacted are actually accounted beyond 1 million. And you can see details about this, as well as the one um, delivered for 2021 in, again, in the community repo of the working group. So this is the one that we disclosed uh, in 2021, uh, which includes all details. And this is the one that we disclosed um, uh, earlier in January for 2022. And in here, you also have um, essentially the biggest and most relevant uh, items that we track. There's many, many more dissemination and communication efforts that we just don't track. So the impact is significantly higher than what we are reporting in here. But still, we believe that for a humble working group uh, in the ROS2 community, uh, reaching out about a million roboticists, really a significant uh, number. So uh, great to know, <laughs> Davis, that you're happy. So so we are to have you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, for setting the context. And with that, I think um, I think we can jump into the next topic. Maybe just a, a few words about the fact that another great success that I think we achieved as a working group is the fact that thanks to uh, our work together, and especially thanks to those of you who voted in December in the last meeting, finally we got approved REP 2008. So this is, as of now, the first robotics standard in the ROS2 community that defines how hardware acceleration should be introduced into robotic architectures. Um, in a, uh, a vendor-neutral, scalable, and technology-agnostic manner. So this paves the way for future growth in a vendor-neutral manner, setting down some fair rules for the game so that there is no uh, lock-in, as it happened in other areas, such as AI, uh, wherein, as we know, certain GPU vendors essentially got overly powerful. So we are um, very much looking forward to see how this can grow into more and more norms, more and more standards. We are working on a few more on our side, and I definitely encourage people to keep up 
uh, with the activity. Um, this is the success of all of us. So congrats to everyone and uh, stay tuned for more on this regard. Now, let's dive into one of the strategic projects, uh, the robotics MCU project. This is a pretty, pretty exciting uh, one. Um, the general status is somehow summarized in the meta ticket that we track in here. And I don't want to steal time from Max, who will give you the complete report. I will only point out the fact that we are doing really fine uh, in advancing uh, with this. As you can see, Milestone 1 has five phases. We are pretty much about to close the phase number two. Uh, and then we will dive into the more firmware slash software layers. Uh, for a first demonstrator, and the initial target was to uh, demonstrate this uh, RISC V native RTPS interoperability capabilities uh, by Irwin, uh, I, sorry, Iron Irwin, which is May 2023. So that's the next release of ROS2. So hopefully, we can have um, an announcement together with the launch uh, with the robotics MCU or, or the uh, Robo 5 MCU project. Um, so yeah, with that, uh, let me pass it to Max, who uh, can tell us more about where we are in terms of uh, phase two of the um, development. Max, take it over. Thank you for a very nice introduction, Victor. So let me share my screen for a very quick demonstration of where we are on this project. And as you mentioned, we achieved the first part of the uh, of the, the first uh, half of the hardware-related phases, basically. Uh, the first goal was to port the board, the, the, the Core 5 uh, MTU project to um, the KR260 board and uh, to have a Hello World demonstrator, uh, which makes use of this project and free RTOS. And this is what I'm planning on showing it today. So basically, um, I've already uh, loaded the bitstream in the, um, on the FPGA, which is running. And I am using now this version, this customized version of Eclipse, Eclipse to, um, to, um, to load the software on the board. Just for you, for information, the version of Eclipse uh, is the Core 5 SDK, which you can download on the Open Hardware Group download page. And here there are the links to the hardware project. It's uh, the uh, Core 5 MCU project in our uh, organization. It is a fork of the Open Hardware uh, Core 5 MCU project. We are developing under the Robo 5 MCU branch. And in this other project here, in this repository, the Robo5 MCU demo, there is the um, software part. And here you can see uh, basically an example of the setup. So we are using a JPEG debugger and a, a USB to TTL to, uh, to talk to the, um, to the board. So uh, board is connected. This is the project. Here, I just uh, click on the debug button, so it, the project gets compiled. OpenOCD is connecting to the uh, RISC-V uh, core on the board, so it is connected now. And we are ready to start the execution of the program. Here, I tap the play button, and if I see here, uh, this is a, um, a Minicom uh, interface. So this is just, as I mentioned in Hello World, proof of concept of uh, that the software is running. And um, basically, it is interesting because there is the free RTOS running underneath this demo. We are using, uh, making use of the of the all of the features which uh, are reasonable for uh, for such a, a simple showcase. So we are using interrupts uh, and and similar and similar features. Um, yeah, this is pretty much what I wanted to show today, and I'm open to answer your questions whether you have any.
This is this is awesome, Max. Thank you so much for uh, giving that that demo. We love demos. I think everyone's afraid in robotics to give demos, so I encourage everyone to give demos, please. <laughs> um, fantastic report on the progress. And and just in case um, in case it wasn't obvious, uh, what Max has shown is how essentially within the FPGA there is a soft core synthesized, a RISC five soft core synthesized. And he is programming it. Uh, the the sorry the the soft core has free RTOS real time operating system inside, and Max has shown how he has programmed it with that simple program, that Hello World, and essentially um, this is the cornerstone we are now using to move into um, more and more stages. Right now, Max's team um, is working towards integrating uh, an Ethernet uh, block so that we can uh, have communications directly from this RISC five core into a ROS2 network, direct ones. Uh, and that's going to be an exciting uh, next move, which you will hear uh, from if you continue sticking around. Uh, did I miss anything, Max? No, thank you for completing my presentation, actually. <laughs> no, no, I don't think I, I, I can even do that. I think you did uh, awesomely fine just, just following, uh, following your lead in here. So um, that that is awesome. Okay, so that is um, that is pretty much uh, the status. Again, stay tuned uh, for these uh, updates. We will continue updating that meta ticket, uh, and and yeah, I'm I'm personally very very excited about this uh, project. This is possibly one of the ones that I'm the most excited this year. Uh, so uh, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye also on the resources that Max shared regarding the open hardware uh, group. Very very uh, interesting. Um, community as well. Uh, and feel free to reach out to Max if you have any opportunities uh, that you'd like to exploit with him directly. Okay, so uh, going back into the minutes. Um, oh, there's someone joining. Welcome. <laughs> so going back into the minutes, uh, and again, just for the sake of everyone, pasting the minutes uh, in the chat so that you can follow uh, on your own. Uh, the next thing up is the updates on the robot perf. Uh, robotics computing benchmarking suite. Uh, and I'm happy to report that there are new resources available. We have uh, posted uh, finally an update. Again, the robot perf project is accessible in this uh, URL that we are maintaining. It's all based on um, static content hosted in GitHub. So thanks GitHub for that. Uh, and do feel free to send contributions if you catch uh, any issues, of course. Now, um, what, what matters right now is the fact that besides that flashy new uh, domain and website, there's a new specification that we've uh, pushed. Uh, so please go through it if you would like to learn on how to do proper benchmarks in robotics, performance benchmarks particularly. Um, do feel free, please, to review REP 2014, which again is an ongoing standardization effort to try to bring this into yet another standard in the robotics community. So do feel free to um, to review this document and contribute uh, to uh, the work that uh, essentially Ingo, Christoph, and myself are push are putting and pushing out there. And finally, uh, there is the source code uh, available. Uh, of the benchmarks, as well as a new repo that contains our ROS packs. And this is something we'll be discussing uh, briefly. So the source code of Robot Perf is now uh, being increasingly completed. So you can now have a, a sneak peek uh, or a preview into the first implementation of the benchmarks. This is particularly one we'll be touching on today, uh, two node perception uh, example. But in addition to that one, we created another repository called ROS packs, which are going to be ROS packs which will uh, be used to feed and, and execute benchmarks in a fully reproducible manner. That is the intent. And so every single benchmark will always be referring to a particular, a particular ROS pack, sorry. So that's uh, those are new resources for you to consider. Now, um, as an ask to the working group, to you all, uh, please do review the specification I pointed you to. Uh, there's lots of interesting information in there. Um, and for those of you willing to try this out, uh, I'm happy to report that I created here a ticket. Um, sorry, there is there, there was an issue, and I know we discussed this before the meeting. Uh, Raisa was, was leading this effort. She tested things out. She found an issue uh, and reported about it. So uh, hopefully um, those issues are addressed. And again, I've, I took the liberty of closing the ticket after I addressed it, but do feel free to reopen in case you disagree with me. That That's perfectly fine, and we can iterate as many times as needed. Now, 
Uh, what I wanted to show you is this uh, effort that I pushed actually a few hours ago, uh, which report on the execution of this first benchmark um, in our internal CI CD infrastructure for the particular case of an Intel x86-64 uh, workstation. So this is not a, an edge device or an embedded platform, this is just in my workstation. And as you can see, this is the form you should expect data to be reported on. So we will have the ID of the benchmark, the computational graph uh, that, uh, yeah, probably wrong uh, path. Let me fetch that for you guys real quick. The computational graph, once again, here it is. So this is, uh, this is the computational graph that we are considering in here for this case. So um, as you can see uh, in this context, uh, what, is, what is in this namespace benchmark is what's being benchmarked actually. Um, and you can see how we have an input component and an output component. Actually, they are they are components, technically speaking, so not nodes, but everything uses intra-process communication, so components. And then we are uh, benchmarking the data flow that goes from the input topic all the way into the uh, output component. That's what we are technically benchmarking. We're using a low um, overhead real-time capable tracer, LTTNG and ROS2 tracing. And the data, the preliminary data comes in here. So you can see how uh, we can get out of these uh, scripts, not only the uh, trace files and the trace information, but also automation to generate these fancy plots. In particular in here, you can see the, the stack of ROS2, each one of the trace points plotted in a somehow uh, tower manner. So that you can see where most of the time uh, goes. And we, we are doing this for one instance, uh, for a number of instances, calculating the mean values and also the maximum one. Again, uh, this is robotics. We are interested in the maximum value because robotics are real-time systems and for real-time, we care about meeting the deadlines. So worst case scenario is what we should be mostly looking at. We can also plot things in this other way where you can see in multiple dimensions how the data flows across the various layers in the ROS2 stack. So the ROS middleware layer, the ROS client uh, library layer, RCL CPP, and also user end. Uh, and then there's the layer of the benchmark we are technically uh, measuring. Um, we might add new layers in the future as we use more and more accelerators. So stay tuned uh, to that. Uh, and finally, also out of the um, benchmark effort and through um, some of the scripts provided and disclosed already, you can see how uh, we're getting data that then we can use to report on the actual measurement collected. Uh, for now, again, we are reporting on maximum values. Um, we may add a bunch of them to the reports in the future, but I think for now, I just want to use one value to keep it simple. One thing for everyone to consider is that I have encountered significant amount of issues using fast DDS, uh, DDS implementation. I, I spend lots of hours um, trying to come up with a workaround, trying to still leverage fast DDS. And finally, uh, frankly speaking, I had to give up. Uh, I have reached out uh, actually in this course as a follow up uh, to a Prosima. Hopefully they can react to this and they can help out. Uh, but right now we are using Cyclone DDS and we will be using Cyclone DDS strictly to conduct benchmarks uh, because it seems to be the most reliable uh, implementation uh, right now. This may change down the road, hopefully, uh, but we will need some uh, contributions from a Proxima and the fast DDS company, I, I believe. So um, again, this is regarding the preliminary results. Um, next up, so what's coming next? Because right now you can literally uh, go into the repository and reproduce this same thing in your work uh, stations and or in your uh, own edge targets. So what is missing right now in uh, robot perf to start scaling? Of course, we are missing lots of benchmarks. So feel free to start understanding the uh, methodology and to propose your own benchmarks. But besides that, we also believe that we are missing uh, the tools required to add new data in a somewhat simplified manner. Especially we are running most of our stuff in external continuous integration systems. So we will probably make an effort to develop some CLI tooling that allows you to list the available benchmarks and also add additional data. Uh, for you to keep in mind each one of the benchmarks, uh, for example, A1, it is stored on its own directory of the uh, repository. 
And then what, what matters in here is there is here a benchmark.yaml file. And this readme you can see in here actually is auto-generated from the YAML file. And this YAML file is what needs to be updated uh, if you want your results to somehow get uh, disclosed and persist in the benchmark reference uh, suite in a way. So what you would need to do is send a pull request that changes and adds the corresponding results for your own um, experiment to this. And as you can see, the format is super simple. So there is a well-defined uh, format uh, that's actually uh, described in the uh, specification that I asked everyone to review. So it's described in here. There is a section in here uh, about general concepts and particularly about creating a new benchmark and how you should describe it. So uh, keep an eye on those benchmark.yaml files, which are part of each one of the ROS packages. And also keep an eye on the extensions we will hopefully contribute soon. I don't want to commit for the next meeting, but maybe, uh, which will add yet new ROS packages, uh, particularly um, benchmark extension to the ROS2 CLI, so that you can do ROS2 benchmark whatever. And that whatever will come in the sense of subverbs that allow you to list benchmarks, to add value to benchmarks, so that you don't need to deal directly with these YAML files. Everything should happen in a simplified manner. So uh, with that automation in mind, uh, now hopefully you know what is coming next. Uh, also, we might do some pre preliminary work also on building uh, minimalistic CI CD uh, infrastructure in the robot perf benchmarks repo to validate that each one of the benchmarks at least builds. Uh, we, we don't want to overcommit because maintaining CI CD infrastructures are big commitments but at least we can automate the process of validating that it builds. Uh, and that, should, that should be manageable for us. So those are the next few things that you should expect uh, from our side. Um, no updates on the robotics processing unit, but uh, there certainly will come uh, later this year updates on this regard. And finally, just as a heads up, uh, please keep an eye on RED 2014, very connected to robot birth. Um, there hasn't been any major updates due to time uh, restrictions, but we will put time into this in the coming weeks, months. Now, um, I know we're almost at the uh, top of the half an hour allocated, but I wanted to briefly uh, give, give you guys a heads up of what are the new goals uh, for this year. You have them described in here, but roughly, roughly, there's four major topics uh, I'd personally like to propose that we focus on. The first one is that I think it's crucial at this point, given the fact that we have enabled multiple boards and hardware accelerators, that we developed uh, and published a comprehensive set of benchmark tools and benchmark reference um, mechanisms to evaluate what is best for each uh, scenario. This will help you architects come up with the best uh, computational solution for your robotic uh, situations. That's the number one priority, I believe. The number two is increasing the amount of vendors participating, uh, silicon vendors and hardware manufacturers coming up with accelerators. I'm very much pushing for getting more and more vendors to participate and we're being successful. So um, this is making the group greater and making our activity more valuable and relevant. So stay tuned for announcements on that regard. Um, third, somewhat connected is the fact uh, that um, connected also to the silicon vendors, there is an increasing amount of companies that want to leverage hardware acceleration. And I cannot list uh, some of the names because some of these discussions are ongoing, but I can tell you there are some big names in the ROS2 world which are starting to build on top of our work. So this is yet another reason for you to invest your time in this working group, to contribute, to get involved, and to pave the way for what I personally believe is going to revolutionize robotics, which is hardware acceleration. So. Um, this is something uh, we will put uh, efforts on, which is increasing the collaborations uh, with industry partners and the adoption and embracement of what we have created and pushed forward so far. Last but not least, the strategic projects. What I've been discussing on, uh, the Robo5 MCU project, the Robot Perf, and the RPU Robotics Processing Unit projects. Um, this is pretty much it, uh, what we had. Sorry for the extra one minute. And for those of you that want to stick around, happy to take a Q&A now uh, for everything that we discussed, including Max's demonstrator and or any suggestions you may have for goals for this year.
questions, comments? None this time? Um, hi. Hi, go ahead. Hey, uh, so I just wanted to mention that um, I am working on uh, changing the infrastructure of REP uh, 2014 as to, um, I forgot uh, his name, but um, he mentioned that it should be in a way that's more similar to other ROS reps. So uh, I am tackling that. Uh, if anybody is also interested in uh, working on that, just um, send me an email, ping me, um, and we can work on it together. That's awesome uh, and, and very, very welcome. So can you maybe, uh, Raisa, provide a pointer to uh, the branch wherein you are working so that other folks can have a look and, and maybe partner up with you? Uh, I will I will comment it, it on the minutes on the original oh okay it can be uh, yeah I, I can comment it on in the minutes yeah that, that'd, okay. be, that'd be good okay that that's awesome thank you yeah so so I'll, I'll make sure that gets added and maybe in the next call we can have a short discussion around this and you can drive it uh for all of us uh but that is just let me say thumbs up for uh that contribution i haven't had the time uh, to look at it and frankly speaking i think this rep needs uh fresh eyes <laughs> because we are all too contaminated writing it so um i think your blood and fresh blood in here is going to be super welcome so excited to receive your contributions and have you as an author thank you Raisa. thank you all Hi, right Victor. go ahead Hi, Hi, this is, yeah this is larry from intel and uh, i try out the new benchmark tool and uh, do we need to do anything to configure the hardware for example if i want to run an intel platform or i want to run an agx do i need to change any configuration so it depends very much of um which parts of your edge device you want to leverage Larry. If you just want to leverage the uh, HPS, uh, the hard processing system, or the PS, the processing system, uh, AKA the CPU, CPUs, uh, there's nothing you need to do. You can just run it and get a, get a baseline uh, access. If you, however, uh, want to leverage some of the accelerators, then you need to change your launch file into one that somehow captures the essence of your accelerator. Let me particularly give you a hint towards uh, what I'm speaking about. So, for example, uh, in the case of right now, the A1, which is the only benchmark available, again, we just needed one for demonstration purposes. You can reproduce it with instructions that you have in here, uh, mm -hmm. in the CPU, just directly. You will have, uh, and you can note that essentially it goes all the way down into launching mm -hmm. this uh, launch file, which is living right under here, right? Mm -hmm. here, this one. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to launch things with an FPGA enabled implementation, which is going to split the computational graph into CPU and FPGA acceleration kernels, then you need to change your launch file into this other one. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening in here is that instead of launching the image proc CPU centric uh, nodes, it's, it's launching the ones that come from a uh, essentially uh, from the image pipeline perception stack that has been forked and enabled for FPGA capabilities. So that's, mm -hmm. that's something to consider. Obviously, your FPGA or GPU solution needs to have uh, support for that, but I'm more than happy to touch on that with you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and, and see how we can help. Sure. sure. Thank you so much. No worries. Uh, happy to help. More questions, folks? Uh, yes. Uh, hi, everyone, if I may. Um, the uh, RISC-V implementation of the Robo5, um, how much of the, uh, FP the fabric of the FPGA resources uses? Very good question, Guglielmo. Uh, Max? Yeah, if, uh, here I have to uh, use my memory, which is not always reliable. I think it's uh, fifty percent. Um, let me check immediately. I will uh, post the number here in the chat as soon as I can find it. Okay, thank you very much. 
Yeah, uh, I would just uh, I would just quickly uh, just checking. Uh, so so eventually, uh, Guglielmo, nevertheless, we will post uh, somewhere officially. The amount of, of resources is split by by type of resource, meaning uh, the loot files, the flip flops, the DSPs, and the VRAMs consumed. Uh, but but yeah, um, I'm sure I'm sure that Max uh, and and his team, who are the experts on 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 RISC five, uh, definitely can come up with some uh, creative ways to lower the the use. But right now, uh, it does sound like we're using a significant. Uh, amount. Uh, if you, Google Elmo, or anyone in your team has any experience with alternative uh, RISC five implementations, I think it, we would be delighted to hear maybe other opinions. Oh no, I, I was just uh, asking in the sense that I think that's a great work because I saw the GitHub. It has different interfaces, supports APB, Axi, whatever interfaces are useful for an MCU. So I was just wondering, but uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think that. Uh, especially if you want to create a silicon piece, you can go uh, lower than those resources. The KR260 is not a big device, so that that is fine uh, completely. I think there is anyway the possibility to save some space somewhere, um, because this design was just for a general purpose MCU, and probably we don't need all the features which are there. So there is room for uh, for saving. I'm quite confident. But uh, how much could we save? It is a bit too early for me to tell. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Furthermore, I would add the fact that we are still missing the, uh, the Ethernet piece, um, the RTL Ethernet piece, which possibly will uh, consume more resources. Uh, but, but something I'm, I'm personally excited about is how this, this working prototype is going to lead us to yet maybe take the step forward to um, go into one of these um, popular foundries these days, which uh, seem to be free everywhere, and maybe manufacture a few uh, ROS native uh, microcontrollers. Um, by a few, I mean maybe, I don't know, a few dozens. So there might be a chance, actually, and this is something uh, Max and I need to discuss offline, but there might be a chance that maybe uh, each one of the members of the working group might be able to get their hands on the first ever uh, ROS2 processor. Uh, it will be a microcontroller, but still a processor, small one. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is this is something to consider, uh, and there might be even room to partner up with uh, one of these foundries. So, so yeah, uh, I agree with Guglielmo. Uh, I think the expectations with KR260 should be managed, but still lots of room for improvement and excitement. All right. So um, unless there is any other pressing question, I think we can break it. In here, folks, thank you for this uh, extra minutes. Oh, here we go. So Max just um, posted all of the resources. Yeah, it's a bit high on VRAM utilization, but the reason is that this synthesis round included an um, internal logic analyzer. So we can assume this number is lower in reality. But uh, yeah, I don't have the, the numbers Per, uh, per entity in the design at the moment. So for us to consume this, Max, uh, what is what is each column? Uh, so, so the last. Uh, I, I didn't get copied. So first column is, uh, is the number of well utilization, availability, and percentage of utilization. Okay, okay that's what I was uh, looking for. Awesome. So I'll get this pasted, guys, in the minutes so that we have it handy. Thank you, Max, for, for passing this. This is super no useful. Trouble. And uh, again, folks, stay tuned for updates. Uh, we will continue working. Uh, please uh, reach out if um, there's any further ideas that needs to be considered. And other than that, have a fantastic rest of your day uh, or night, as in my case, I think. Uh, and, and yeah, um, stay tuned and continue contributing to Ross, please. Uh, sorry, there's a quick question. Victoria, you just got me. Go, go for it. Oh, it wasn't a question, maybe. It wasn't a question. Okay, so everyone, have a good one. Thank you, and see you in the next meeting. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.